the challenges of running a ministry that has got such a large footprint is telling the story to you, our members. So this opportunity to be in Izmir with James, the chaplain of Smyrna. Hello, James. Welcome to the Church of St. John the Evangelist in Izmir. Lovely to have you with us and a pleasure to be part of your AGM. So in the past, we've had videos, we've had speakers come to the AGM. What we're hoping to do today is to show you around so you get a picture of what it's like here and a real sense of the ministry that's going on. I hope you enjoy the next few minutes. So here we are in the entrance porch of the Church of St John the Evangelist in Izmir. And we're looking at this beautiful window which shows the great martyr of this city, um, St Polycarp. Polycarp was a student of St John the Evangelist and uh, he became the bishop of the city's little Christian community at a young age and he persevered in faith and Christian leadership um, until he was in his late 80s when he was called upon by the governor of the city to renounce his faith, which he refused to do and receive the punishment first of burning and then, sorry to say, of being stabbed. This particular window was part of the original St John's Church, built in 1900, the building we're now standing in. But the building was badly attacked in the 1960s by an anti-British mob, during which all the pews, the organ, and many of the windows were burned or smashed up. But pieces of St Polycarp's window were saved and then five years ago when I arrived here uh, finding these uh, pieces of a nice old window uh, suggested we should get it properly um, set here in the porch and we found a very able uh, stained glass worker locally in Izmir who would have thought it um, and together with him we designed this setting um, giving a profile um, to these words from the book of Revelation be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life which could be the leitmotif of St Polycarp's life and witness and we hope is a, an inspiration in the present day to all those who come to this church as pilgrims and as worshippers. So welcome inside St John's Church and we're standing at this rather magnificent cockle shell font which is quite near the entrance and of course that's a symbol because the font is the beginning of the Christian life where infants and adults are baptised. And it's been a real privilege here to not only do some of that traditional work with um, babies, baptising them in the font, uh, with families that we know but also to welcome others into the Christian church, um, adults who we've accompanied through their journey of faith. We've um, studied a lot together. Uh, we don't make it very easy to uh, slip into Christianity here. We feel people need a firm foundation and they need time to become part of the Christian community. And so we've had some wonderful celebrations here at the font um, with those whom we've helped to come into the Christian faith and we've also used one of the pilgrimage places outside Izmir where they have a kind of full immersion font and uh, some of you may have seen photographs from um, one of the baptisms that we had there uh, three years ago when several of our adult friends became Christians in a wonderful celebration there. As Anglicans, we join a stream of witness in this city going back to Polycarp. But the specifically Anglican witness started here in the early 17th century, when the Levant Company uh, started operations in the Eastern Mediterranean. It had a trading post here with what was called a factory. That means, I think we would say, something like a college or a company of, of young traders, mostly single men. And the Levant Company 
felt that a chaplain was needed to keep the young men in line and also, of course, to share the good news with any other English speakers in the city who may be able to uh, join in the worship of the Anglican community. And that was how uh, our chaplaincy started and how it continued for well over a 100 years. But then, in the middle of the 19th century, the demographic here began to change. Many British families came out at the time that a British company was building a major railway from Izmir to the city of Aydin, about 100 miles further south. Very rich agricultural area, and British companies and individuals were making a roaring trade in dried fruit, in carpets, and in time, in industrial activities and agriculture. And this attracted several thousand British people to Izmir. And they, of course, needed a church. And by the beginning of the 19th century, um, uh, Christian life for Anglicans in the city was much more like it would have been at home because of this uh, large um, contingent of British people um, involved in many different areas of life here in Smyrna. And so when um, the consulate building uh, moved and was no longer able to accommodate a chapel, the local people raised money and built this lovely church, which looks as though it could have been picked up in an English village or small town and had palm trees scattered around it. Uh, it is actually a railway church. It was a railway engineer who uh, designed the building. And this beautiful marble floor that uh, I'm standing on is supported on pieces of uh, railway line. Uh, so it's very much a railway engineer's church. During the course of the 20th century, that kind of parish life model um, began to change again. Um, after the 1920s, there were far fewer British people here, and the community became more international. And so we come to the situation now in the uh, 21st century. We're an international congregation. We have uh, British, American, Ar Iranian, Korean, French, and Turkish people. Uh, we are open several afternoons a week and welcome uh, visitors into this lovely building. And many of them take away a Turkish copy of the New Testament with them um, as they leave. Uh, visitors come and join us for worship and some of our visitors become congregation members. Um, so all in all we have a very vivid ministry here. It's distinctively Anglican, it's welcoming, it's focused on uh, building the kingdom here by having a welcoming community and sharing the gospel through our beautiful building, our worship and the friendship that we show to those who visit us. How many people do you have here today? Alan? Well, we only had 13 today because it's the middle of the summer and it's very hot. But like on May 4th, we had 57 people that stopped by. They took 16 Injils, or New Testaments, and three of the films of the Gospel of John. And the next week, 49 people came by, like that. the ancient Agora to the citadel, the centre of military power for this city for many, many different civilizations and eras. It's a good point to reflect on the current relationship between churches in the city and the local authorities. And in fact, we've had great cooperation with the mayor and the governor and other senior officers, which is a great encouragement to us. They recognize our long history here, and that's helpful, and our beautiful building. And in fact, three years ago, the mayor authorized a major restoration of our church hall roof, which also covered my office and our kitchen. And that might seem a small thing, but actually it was a big job, and the whole roof um, 
needed replacing, not something we would have been able to do. We hadn't realised it was in as bad a condition as it was. So it's nice to be able to report that we have great cooperation here with the local authorities and I always feel if there's anything that concerns me or if there's some help needed by our community that there's an opportunity for me to ask and that the way the city is run these days is uh, open to the minorities that are here and supportive of them. It's been great to be able to participate in your AGM and just in conclusion I wanted to say how grateful we are for all the support we have here from ICS. Of course the money is important and we're very grateful for it and it makes it possible for ministry to happen here but we also really appreciate the fact that ICS is a praying community. We thank you so much for the prayer that supports us too and we pray that you may continue in that generosity and prayer. Thank you.